All right guys, today we are going to be talking about why I replaced this right here with this. So we're gonna be digging into a little bit deeper into the Glock 19X and ultimately talking about why I finally stopped carrying the Springfield Prodigy and chose to go with the Glock 19X, the peanut butter Glock, and going over not just that, but also this configuration. Because this, as you guys can probably tell here, isn't quite a standard um, Glock 19X. This one's a little bit fancy, a little bit special, but let's first dig into it. So for those who know, you guys will probably know that um, this here prodigy is kind of my bastard child. Bastard child, I've been trying to get it to work well for a long time. I've replaced many of the internal components and overall I don't particularly hate this gun it's decent especially good for the range for practicing and i especially like it for new shooters but unfortunately with this gun i just can't really get it to work phenomenally well for me even though it is very polished very clean very you know well well aftermarket kitted out and the trigger itself actually is very crispy and very nice and especially with all the aftermarket parts it is a decent handgun but after all my qualms and stuff, I finally decided that I was going to go back to a, a little bit of a familiar face, and that is the Glock 19X. Now, for those who've been around this channel for a while, you guys probably know that I've previously had a Glock 19X before, and so this is not an entirely new platform to me, but I wanted to go back to the 19X for a few reasons. First off, it is capacity and overall kind of size and form factor to the Prodigy. I really do like the Prodigy and I do enjoy carrying this gun. I think this is a really good blend or hybrid of a gun that is not only very functional, very shootable, but also very carryable. And so I really enjoyed a lot about this gun, but I just really wasn't enthusiastic about its reliability. So I went back to Glock because Glock is pretty rock solid when it comes to reliability and overall usability. Now for me I do have a Gen 4 and I'm not the largest fan of the Gen 4 so I wanted a 19x partly because um, it gives you that little bit of extra grip length so it's a little bit easier to you know grip and a little bit easier to shoot but also too I just like how it does not have the finger grooves it is straight because this is a gen 4.5 essentially a gen 5 um, this one is a little bit uh, just more friendly when it comes to shooting it so overall from shooting experience from the shootability standpoint of it I really do like it now the grip angle still does take a little bit to get used to especially when you directly translate from a 1911 over to a Glock. There's a little bit of a steeper shooting angle um, or grip angle, but it isn't too bad. And it's once again, nothing that a little bit of training can't solve. So like I said, I gravitated back towards the 19X and overall, I took it out for some you know, range time and really enjoyed it, really loved shooting it, but I kind of wanted to pick up where I left off with my last 19X. And had I not sold my last Glock 19X, this is essentially what I would have configured it to be. So like I, said, like I had previously mentioned, this isn't exactly a stock Glock 19X. If you guys couldn't already tell by the a little bit of a different look, of course, with the red dot. Now they are cool enough um, Glock is offering a MOS version of the Glock 19X nowadays. That was something that when I first bought my original Glock 19X, they didn't even have that. And they are still not super accessible on the current market. So I did purchase on the secondary market a um, just a standard Glock 19X and uh, I got this aftermarket slide. So got the aftermarket slide and uh, of course it was cut for RMRs. So let's go over this whole build right here and this is the other reason why I absolutely love the 19 or the Glocks as a whole but this 19X too. So when we look at this stock Prodigy and this is actually not even including the hollow sun on here this thing's stock is about $1,300 just in and of itself. This gun fully built out with everything that you see here the handgun everything itself is sub $1,300. This is less than that. Now it is close I think it's about 
12 20 ish dollars total in this gun but overall pretty darn affordable and so let's break it down and let's break into everything that i did with this gun so first off the biggest thing for me that i add to pretty much every one of my glocks is a um extended slide release now of course this is a gen 5 essentially so it does have the ambi slide release but this uh, is an extended slide release you guys can tell a little bit of extra metal hanging out there this is an oem glock extended slide release and i really love them because especially if you're used to shooting with extended slide releases going back to a stock glock slide release just sucks so i added the extended slide release there um slide lock slide release so that it's super easy to use super fun functional um, and yeah so it's the first no-brainer upgrade that I did next thing I did to this guy was of course I added the aftermarket slide and I added a FDE aftermarket slide with a ported barrel and uh, excuse the lighting here it's not the easiest to see but hopefully you guys can see there this is a ported barrel has a uh, four port sights on each side of it. So it gives it a nice kind of uh, assistance with recoil. Now the ported barrels certainly aren't necessary, but it's nice, especially if you already have a cut top slide to have that feature. In addition to this too, what I like about this aftermarket slide is it does give you those forward slide serrations and rear slide serrations. So especially it's nice to have forward slide serrations when you have a chunkier optic on here. Um, just helps you rack it a little bit easier. But aside from that, um, we also have a Trigicon Type 2 RMR on here. This is a little bit of an older generation before they went to the, you know, kind of like touch pads on the side. This one auto adjusts its um, brightness, which I personally really dig. But yeah, this is a Type 2 RMR on there. And then lastly, I added some Ameriglow suppressor height sights on this guy. And of course they have some tritium in them to help with the glow. So for me, that is pretty much everything that I wanted on this. Now I can also throw my TLR 1HL on here as well as far as a weapon mounted light, but um, as far as a carry gun goes and a carry setup, this is the way I have it configured and I'm honestly pretty happy with it. Now I've left the stock trigger partly because as we've seen, you know, adding tons of things like aftermarket triggers and stuff can kind of be wishy-washy in the court of law. So I definitely try to leave this plain Jane where I can um, if I have to use this for self-defense. And honestly, too, I don't really hate um, Glock triggers. I know said by no one ever, but I will say this when it comes to the Glock trigger, the Glock trigger is not a great trigger by any stretch of the imagination especially when we go over to something like this um, prodigy where this thing is so light so crisp and just absolutely beautiful this is definitely a superior trigger but i will say the one thing that i do really find at least nice about block triggers is that um, they are very reliable and very predictable. So there's lots of creep, there's lots of travel to it. It's not the nicest trigger in the world, but it gets the job done and uh, overall is very predictable. And once again, it's, it's a Glock trigger. There's not too much I can say. It gets the job done. It's not the best. It's certainly not a competition. It's not some two-stage trigger and there's tons of squish and travel, but it is very predictable and you know when it's gonna go bang. So for me, I don't really have any issues with it, but that is just me. And like I said, that is kind of like my baseline and necessity for a Glock, like what it needs um, or what I would have if I could change a Glock and make it kind of a Gucci Glock. This is essentially how I would configure it um, with, you know, like the red dot sight, with the suppressor height sights, extended mag release, or sorry, slide release. Um, everything in that regard is how I would have this thing set up. So yeah, uh, that's essentially it. The kind of quirks to this gun because it is a little bit piecemeal together and I did want to keep it on, on a budget. I should note, should note that essentially um, for me, I spent 550 on the gun, 250 on the slide, 350 on or slide and barrel combo. And I spent 350 on the Trigicon RMR and about, I want to say $50 on the sights. And of course, I think like another $20 for the extended slide release. 
price. So overall, we're looking at about 1220 on this entire thing, which like I said, still puts you underneath just the base Prodigy. This Prodigy with the Hollow Sun, you know, is an extra couple hundred dollars. So, you know, you're talking probably like 15 something in this gun, and that's not including, you know, like the aftermarket hammer, the aftermarket sear, all the, you know, internals for this gun. So definitely, this has definitely been a, a much larger money pit gun for me. But once again, I do enjoy the Prodigy. It's a fun gun, especially at the range, but it is tough to argue really wanting to carry it because of its reliability qualms. Now, like I was gonna say, um, some quirks to this one, uh, some kind of just fun things about it, fun facts. I will say, um, with this slide, I was a little bit disappointed because though this is a Gen 5 slide, it is compatible compatible with you know, Gen 5 guns. You will notice that it has that definitely like Gen 3 kind of Glock blockiness, even Gen 4 kind of blockiness to the slide. So it doesn't match up quite with how the frame is cut and how a Gen 5 is cut, um, which is a little bit unfortunate, but it's fine. And then the other kind of thing is that I did not have any mounting screws for this guy. So I just went down to the hardware store, found some really nice, actually decent stainless steel um, mounting screws, but they are Phillips head. So it looks a little bit weird on there because most of us are used to seeing Torx bits and hex heads on there. And this one actually is just plain old Phillips head. So of course there's some Loctite on there and uh, everything is done correctly. And like I said, they're actually really nice stainless steel screws, certainly not su super cheap. Um, so yeah, uh, but it works Everything works, everything's stable, everything's rock solid, and uh, yeah, everything works really well. So that is my essentially my Glock uh, 19X and the way that I would set one up, and uh, hopefully this has been enjoyable. You guys can kind of see, you know, like um, different types of flavors, different types of setups. Now I will say a stock Glock 19X, even without a red dot, is still a totally valiant um, option as well. But this is just a nice setup, in my opinion, and I think it works pretty darn well. So overall, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing this setup. And uh, hopefully you guys will get to see some range time with this guy pretty soon. Anyways, as always, guys, God bless. I'm out.